Hello and welcome to Castles and Legends. Today we are visiting Holy Island, only accessible from the mainland via a causeway during low tide. And our first stop is of course the castle, Lindisfarne Castle. Although, whether we should actually class it as a castle is up for debate. It was built during the 16th century as an artillery fort and later converted into an Edwardian mansion. But what is for sure is the sensational appearance. Up there on the outcrop, it certainly has the look of a mighty fortress. In the year 634 AD, the Northumbrian King Oswald summoned the Irish monk Aidan, destined to be known as Saint Aidan, to help spread the word of Christianity. Oswald generously granted the island of Lindisfarne for the establishment of a monastery. Saint Cuthbert became a bishop at Lindisfarne in 685 AD and following his death he was buried at Lindisfarne Church, although his remains and relics were later moved to Durham. Lindisfarne soon became a place of pilgrimage after miracles were reported, and in the early 8th century, the magnificent Lindisfarne Gospels were created at the monastery. In 793 AD, the Vikings arrived and raided Lindisfarne, the first of a string of attacks which resulted in the monks abandoning the monastery. Following the Norman conquest, a priory was built on the site of the original monastery. The monks were obliged to fortify the monastery in 1346 due to ongoing conflicts between England and Scotland after England's invasion of Scotland in 1296. Following King Henry VIII's break with Catholicism and the Pope, he began the dissolution of the monasteries. Many religious centres were taken into the Crown's control, their assets stripped and then closed. This fate befell Lindisfarne in 1537. Following the dissolution of the Priory, Henry used the island as a military base for troops on the way to Scotland. In 1544, Edward Seymour arrived here with 2,000 men on his way to attack Edinburgh. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, an artillery fort was built upon a prominent outcrop of rock situated to the north of a former monastic structure between 1565 and 1571 using stone from the ruined priory. The fort cost over £1,000, a large sum for its time, and contained gun platforms and garrison accommodation. The fort was in fact garrisoned by the Crown up until 1893, and at its peak it had 21 mounted cannons. The castle only saw action once, in 1715, when it was briefly seized by Jacobite rebels but surrendered the following day after reinforcements failed to arrive. The rebels were imprisoned at Berwick, but managed to burrow their way out. The castle was used as a coast guard station from 1819 until 1882, when it was abandoned, and the future of the castle looked grim. That was until Edward Hudson founder of the Country Life magazine became captivated by it whilst on holiday in 1901 and soon after secured the lease. Edward Hudson quickly set in motion, transforming Lindisfarne Castle from a derelict artillery fort into a country home for holidaying, employing the artistic architect Edwin Lutyens for the job. Lutyens' innovative design concept centred around creating a mock Judah castle, while the castle's exterior remained largely unchanged. Throughout the castle, you'll find a visual feast of ornate fireplaces, intricately carved wood panelling, 
captivating medieval doors and exquisite antique furniture. Edward Hudson took great pride in Linda's farm castle and over the years he welcomed an array of distinguished guests, including Prime Minister Asquith, King George V and Queen Mary, who visited the castle during their tenure as Prince and Princess of Wales, and Lord Baden-Powell, the founder of the Boy Scouts movement. Despite Edward Hudson's deep affection for Linda's Farm Castle, not everybody shared his enthusiasm. The lack of modern conveniences, which were quite commonplace by that era, such as gas and electricity, overshadowed the castle's quirks. However, I think I could put up with it if I got to live here. Outside the castle, Hudson called on his friend Gertrude Jekyll to transform the land once used by the castle's garrison as a vegetable garden into a wonderful summer walled garden. Edwin Lutyens also applied his unique sense of design to the castle grounds, transforming a collection of upturned boats into charming huts. Edward Hudson's original plans for Linda's farm castle's succession were tragically disrupted by the ravages of World War I, which claimed the life of his intended heir, a friend's son. With no direct descendants to inherit the castle, Hudson made the decision to sell the property in 1922. The castle passed into the hands of Oswald Tony B. Falk, a stockbroker, who subsequently sold it to Edward de Stein, a merchant banker. Despite changing ownership, both Falk and de Stein chose to preserve Lutchen's original design. In 1944, Lindisfarne Castle found a new home when it was gifted to the National Trust. This pivotal moment ensured the castle's preservation for future generations to appreciate and enjoy. Should we classify Linda's Farm Castle as a castle? I'll let you decide. What I can say is it's been a sheer delight to explore up there, all those quirky, quaint rooms. My favourite has to be the ship room. Let me know what you think in the comments.
But for now, it's time we head to our next destination on Holy Island, which is Linda's Farm Priory. So I'll say, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you have and subscribe if you've not already. And I hope to see you at Linda's Farm Priory very soon.